One thing that, uh, that I had hoped for and that we're starting to see isn't that NASA can duplicate what SpaceX does, because SpaceX, again, has certain advantages that NASA doesn't, okay? But what I was hoping to see, and I think we're starting to see that, is what can we do, okay? What practices can NASA adapt? There's some things we can, there's some things we won't be able to uh, because of our different environment, our different history, our different role. But I think there are some things, and kind of going back to, in some ways, back to the Apollo days. If you take a look at kind of the environment that NASA had in Apollo, it was kind of what, in some ways, Elon has with his young engineers and some gray beards. But you had, you know, people trying things and, and, and what works and what doesn't work. Um, I think over the years, we've gotten into a very, you know, you're talking about risk, very risk-averse profile and where I call it full matrix engineering that, okay, that all concerns that anyone can raise have to be chased down 100% before you can make any decision. Okay, so you have like a full matrix of all the things that may be pertinent to a certain decision, and you have to fill that entire array before you can make a decision to go forward. And there's times when that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense for everything we do. SpaceX uses a sparse matrix, okay, 51%. Okay, when, do, when we get to 51%, okay, enough, we're going to make a decision, and then we're, we're going to try it and move on. And so I think there are things that NASA could do, some, you know, explorer-class projects, particularly, again, for, for fresh outs and people first getting into the business. You know, let them cut their teeth, you know, doing some low-cost, you know, low-consequence projects, to fly some stuff in space, and now with things like CubeSats and some of the other things we have available, there's opportunities for that, because there's nothing like flying your first hardware and going through that entire design cycle. I, I had a chance to do this before I came to NASA, so I saw how both in, you know, invigorating and terrifying that was. But once you've gone through it, then it kind of whets your appetite. That, okay, we can do this again. We can do this again. And if you've never been through it, and I've seen... Uh, some of my colleagues at NASA who've been here for decades and have never flown anything that they've worked on, you know, in, in the, for decades. Well, that gets you in a very risk averse because now anything you do fly better work or, you know, this may be your only shot. And so can opening the door so you can have more flight projects that are lower cost, lower consequence, particularly for f people first coming into this industry, I think would be very helpful and would be quite invigorating for the existing staff. So um, that's maybe one of the things that we could adopt from SpaceX.